Welcome to the Aries demo session. Um, I'm going to. I'm Steve Curran. Uh, I'm with Cloud Company Computing. I'm a consultant for BC Gov and have spent a ton of time with the BC Gov team on Aries. Um, Aries maintainer. Um, also, do have an edX course uh, that we did on on uh, Aries uh, a year ago, and we're updating it now. So a lot has changed in the last year. So I thought I would start with a. Uh, overview of what Aries does and, and give that quick introduction to it. I've um, got a little demo to show and then we can get into a uh, summary of what Aries is and questions. So uh, feel free to ask questions. My, demo, my audio is a bit unclear. Um, okay, uh, I'm not sure why there would be echo. Um, I'm going to have to keep going. If I don't have a lot I can change from it. Um, I guess let me make sure of one more thing. Um, yep, I've got the right um, audio going. I'm just going to have to continue and we'll see how it goes. Um, please give me feedback if it's um, still bad. Um, so, Gary's. Uh, Aries uh, is built on the use of verifiable credentials. So let's go over the credential model, which you're seeing on the screen here. Um, in the uh, credential model, you have an issuer. Let's let's stop paper for now. An issuer is some authority that gives a piece of paper to a holder, and that holder and that piece of paper might be a user ID, uh, or sorry, might be a membership card, might be a driver's license, might be a passport. They give it to the holder. The holder holds on to that piece of paper. Um, from time to time, um, and that ends their interaction with the issuer. Um, from time to time, a verifier might ask them to show that piece of paper, and the verifier would scrutinize the document, look at it, see if it's forged or anything like that. Um, the, the verifier would um, decide at one point if they accept the, the document and, and proceed on. So Aries uh, allows you to and, and uh, verifiable credentials allow you to extend that into the digital world. So the way verifiable credentials work, well, that's not what I wanted to do. The verifiable credentials work is an issuer would write cryptographic information once, write it once to a, a blockchain, a ledger, some sort of public area where they publish it. Once they've written that, they can sign verifiable credentials, digital documents, uh, that they sign with the cryptographic material, uh, the private portion of the cryptographic material that they publish, um, the public portion on the ledger, uh, they give that document to the holder. And again, just like in the paper world, that ends the trans interaction. Um, at some time later, a holder and a prover start, uh, and a verifier start um, connecting, and a holder presents a proof to the verifier, not the original document, but a proof that they have the original document. The verifier would read the cryptographic information from the issuer uh, from the blockchain so they know what's in the proof and how to verify it, and then they verify that proof. So that's the interaction of um, verifiable credentials. And Aries, Hyperledger Aries, is a project to implement the various roles, agents that perform the various roles, the issuer, the hold, the prover, and the verifier in a verifiable credential world. So that's what Aries is. Um, let's see uh, it in action. Uh, I'm going to try a video here. It's uh, um, words to it or sound. So this is an example. example uh, in, in Columbia to um, uh, uh, design issue uh, COVID credentials if we wanted to do that. So this was a, a demo that we put together just to share the idea. So the idea there, the person logs into a place where vaccination, proof of vaccination information is available. Um, they move and select a credential, a uh, proof of vaccination that they want to put in, one of their vaccination records. They um, select their wallet is a wallet uh, that they can use to provide that. They, that scans the, the QR code, they get offered a credential, and they accept that credential and 
load that into the wallet. So now they have that in their wallet. They have this vaccination credential. Next, they can share that wallet. So they go to a verifier and they scan that QR code. It asks them for data from their wallet. They uh, and they provide that information. So that was a quick overview. I didn't want to take a lot of time in doing uh, a demo. For this is LinkedIn notes. Let me get out of here and back to There we go. Okay. Um, so Aries in action. Um, so that demo was done by two governments, um, a system integrator in independent of the two governments. Um, there was three um, Aries components used. Akapai is one, uh, ariesframework.net. Um, using a Trinsic mobile wallet, so that was the wallet you saw, as well the verifier was implemented on AriesFramework.net as well, using the Trinsic platform, which is a vendor in the, uh, in the space, and all of that went from zero to that full demo in um, a week of work, so, and, and, and done by people not core to the team, for example, or GPL. so that's the type of effort that it takes to do these. Um, so what is Aries? Um, uh, and by the way, if anyone has questions and so on, I guess there's a Q&A over there um, being asked. I just wanted to check, but feel free to ask questions so that once I get through this, we can start to ask. Uh, yeah, there was, uh, the, the demo had no sound on it, so you were good to hear anything. Um, so a set of messaging protocols. So Aries is made up primarily of protocols that are defined in a protocol uh, loop repository called Aries RFC, this is linked to it. Um, the basis for interoperability, so you've got a bunch of protocols and you've got a bunch of implementation. How do you make sure that the implementation line up and um, work together? So um, the way we've done that in Aries is we define what's called an Aries interop profile. And that defines the set of Aries RFCs that the community agrees to coordinate on. It's a subset of the total RFCs, and it locks in the RFCs at a certain version. So we make sure that everyone's building to the same thing. Uh, version one of the AIP uh, was done in 2020. We just the other day completed version two. And so that is evolving uh, capabilities we can do. Um, as well, there's an Aries interoperability test suite, and um, this is the link to it, and it shows um, what implementations there are, which ones have implemented a test suite, and how how there's those um, how are they doing at interoper in, interoperating uh, amongst the implementations. As I mentioned, Aries has open source implementations. There's actually five major. Um, implementations and two mobile apps. I've got links to all of them on an upcoming slide. So uh, lots of code in the open, multiple closed source implementations. So a number of um, organizations have built their own. They just follow the RFCs that are defined and built their own implementations. And then many, many deployments. These are the actual code, but um, people have deployed that code over and over. Um, we don't know how many. For instance, I work closely on Aries Cloud Agent Python, I don't know how many deployments there are and how many people are using it. It's very, uh, I see it all the time in, um, when I come across different people using Aries and, and um, doing different things in verifiable credential communities. Um, and, and understand that issuers, verifiers, holders, approvers, all of these things are, um, can be taught in any combination. So an issuer could also be a verifier we actually are working on some things where they're all three roles on an enterprise side. A mobile app could have all three roles. Uh, lots of flexibility in what we can do with it. Whoops. Uh, yeah. um, current direction today, the majority is AIP 1.0, and most of the deployments are based on HL Indy, um, ledger and verifiable credential format. So Indy's very involved, uh, we're very involved with Indy there. Um, AIP2 really extends it to other ledgers, other verifiable credential formats. Indy, plus based on LD, um, plus other verifiable credential formats, such as EDF. So those are the things we're seeing. 
Um, underlying messaging within um, within Aries is a thing called DIGCOM, Dig Communications Messaging V1. Um, DIGCOM V2 is being defined as yet. And so last slide is just a list of all of the projects. Um, this is posted in the um, um, my uh, the schedule uh, schedule.com schedule.com in the thing and there's a bit.ly link this is http bit.ly hgf2021 aries so there we go um uh let's i'm looking at the questions um do you think it's better to join sovereign for identity or is it better to create your own blockchain um it is a lot of effort to bring up an indie network and to publish your own network so uh, you can do it 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 could involve a, a, an enterprise, a set of enterprises joining together to do that, and there are a number of reasons to do that. But certainly, Sovereign gives you Sovereign is an instance of Indie, and it gives you a good way to start with very low effort. Basically, you can download Appify, for example, or or one of the Aries implementations, deploy it, tie it to your um, legacy system, your business app that you're trying to use to be an issuer or a verifier. And um, Sovereign lets you start very low effort, um, much cheaper than, for example, to be to build your own. Um, I read that one of Aries protocols is for buy and sell, so can certificates be used as assets? Um, generally, not. Um, the idea of the model is not um, is issuing a credential to um, from from an issuer to a holder for them to present later. Um, there is no, um, there can be an asset transaction tied to Indy, and so you'd need more about Indy. Um, Aries, uh, as far as I know, I don't think there's any protocols and none in the interop profile um, to allow you to do um, uh, that kind of uh, asset exchange. So it's not a intended for, you know, prevention of double spend and other things you might use for assets. Um, yeah, so how does this work in parallel with authentication? So the idea here is something like we have a use case in British Columbia, for example, with um, the Ministry of Justice wanting to know, who, uh, allowing access to the system to uh, lawyers and lawyers that are um, you know, um, currently practicing. The way we do that is the Law Society, which is the um, uh, membership organization that um, allows lawyers to operate their legislatively um, a, a legislative authority over that they issue a credential to a lawyer the lawyer keeps it in their wallet and when they go to authenticate at a system that requires you to prove you're a lawyer they present that um, it would be verified and so there's and in doing that there's no need to integrate with or tune back to the law society and they can't track what the lawyers are doing they just um use the uh the credentials uh that, that the lawyer holds if the law if the member becomes for some reason out of um uh you know uh, has, uh, loses their membership in the law society for whatever reason. They retire, they have a, a, a criminal charge against them or whatever. The law society can revoke the credential when the lawyer goes to use that credential again, it would not work. Um, let's see. I think that's most of the questions. Any other questions people have? Um, from this, are there plans to support hyperledger fabric? This is one that um, we get a lot, um, and uh, it, it, it's quite interesting to decide. It, it, you don't really know. I haven't done enough to figure out what exactly that would mean. Um, so, it's certainly a an area uh, a fabric client could do verification um, to allow access to it, but I don't know how more completely integrated it would be done. So, um, I, I don't have a great answer for that. Um, is, uh, is there a guide to move from Indy SDK to Aries? Basically, um, in AIP1, in, in all of these libraries except the Go one, yeah, Indy SDK is already built into it, and so it's already um, part of Aries. So any protocol that um, uses, uh, uses Indy as the either ledger 
for the decentralized identity uh, bid or uses Indy uh, for the uh, verifiable credential format already has Indy SDK built in. Basically, uh, Aries spun out of um, creating these um, clients, these agents for Indy to become uh, inde an independent project and, and also to enable it to um, um, uh, use other ledgers and other verifiable credentials like that. Are there in, any integrations with B2C? Um, th there are, uh, the big thing that's happening all around is the use of um, ARIES for uh, the potential for proof of vaccination. So that's uh, the big one right now is a possible use case. We'll see where that goes. Uh, there's a lot of work being done for um, uh, the businesses. I know, for instance, CU Ledger uses Aries um, for their uh, customers. They built it into their own app and embedded it into their own app, the, the protocol. And so they issue a credential to their clients. And and, um, and then when they call it the data center, uh, when they call it the call center, they use those credentials to authenticate the person. Um, can you use uh, identities uh, on an additional fabric channel instead of setting up Indy uh, separately? Um, the Aries framework Go actually has an integration with, uh, with fabric where they're storing that minimal amount of information necessary that uh, the, the public needs for um, the, identi the identifiers for an issuer and for um, issuing credentials on Fabric. So that is definitely possible. Um, yep, so that can be done. Um, I think we're out of time. Hopefully that gave everyone enough information. If there's no more questions, it will wrap it up. It was an intense little bit of uh, session. Um, it's interesting not to be able to have conversations with people. So I hope next time we get to do this in person so we can actually go back and forth on uh, questions rather than do like it. Um, hopefully the slides, uh, as I say, the slides are available in the um, uh, sketch.com and are also uh, available as noted here uh, in the, uh, here up here on the slides um, definition uh, URL. Thanks all, and that's the end of the session.